Welcome to Node.js Interactive. Uh, this is a talk on HTTP3, a quick update. Remember that this is experimental, so do not try it in production. If you try it in production, do not blame me. <laughs> my name is Srivikram Kamat. I'm a software development engineer. My Twitter handle is Srivikram and GitHub handle is Srivikar. If you see, I did not get Srivikram handle on GitHub. That is because somebody, I joined GitHub late in 2015 and somebody else has taken it already. So if you have become parents recently, get GitHub handle for your kids because that's more important than other social media. So the hashtag for Node.js Interactive is hashtag Node.js Interactive if you're active on social media. You can also use HTTP3 uh, or Quick if you like this talk. If you didn't like this talk, then use my name. And what's my name again? Most of you will have forgotten. So I'll give a like clue, okay? So we are in Canada and it is very cold and you will be knowing this drink. It's called rum. It gives a lot of warmth. So imagine a weak rum, not a strong rum, a weak rum, and add tree in front of it, that's my name. <laughs> so what's my history with Node.js? I've been using Node.js for four years now. I started contributing to Node.js core in October 2017. Uh, help make HTTP2 stable, I wrote unit test and uh, fix some bugs. You can do the same with HTTP3, we'll cover that. Uh, I became Node.js core collaborator in March 2018 and I organized and mentored four code and learn events. Uh, what are we going to cover in this talk? We are going to cover what is HTTP 1.1 and why HTTP 2 was required. Then we'll cover what is HTTP 2 and why HTTP 3 was required. Then we'll cover what is HTTP 3 and when is it coming? It's still draft, <laughs> it's still experiment, when is it coming? And we'll see some sample code on the way. So, I would like to thank James Snell, who is here. He's uh, a Node.js uh, technical sharing company member and heading the work on implementing Quick. Thanks, James. And I'd like also like to thank the sponsors for his work, that is Protocol Labs and Neoform. I will also like to thank uh, Anna Henningsen. As James says, she fixes the bugs which he introduces. <laughs> and I'll also thank uh, Daniel, Juan, Ouyang, and many others who have contributed to Quick already. I'll also like to thank Tatsuhiro, Tatsuhiro San for his awesome work in NGTCP2. Uh, like we are using NGTCP2 in, uh, for implementing Quick, and he has done some amazing work. So let's start with HTTP 0 0.9, which was published in 1991. And it was very simple, it was just one line protocol. Okay, you get mypage.html, you send get mypage.html, and you get mypage.html. Awesome, right? Like, no, life was so simple back in 1991, but things had to get complicated. <laughs> so, http 1.0.introduced in May 1996. And it built extensibility. Let us see what it did. Okay, this how you send requests, this is what the response you get. So, now you can send version information because now there is more than one HTTP protocol. You also send browser information because there are multiple browsers. And then you send status code because not all requests are successful. Sometimes there are redirect requests, sometimes there is client error, sometimes a server error. Then there are headers with data information. What kind of server is there? Okay. What kind of content type? So instead of sending content text, you can even send JSON and other types. And then we could, we could include multiple resources in the HTML file. So in this HTML file, there is an image being used. So then HTTP 1.1, the standardized protocol came in June 1999. And I will not go through the headers because there are too many headers. We will just see what were the improvements in HTTP 1.1. So first improvement was persistent, persistent connection in which you can use single TCP connection to send and receive multiple requests and responses which are serial, not the concurrent ones, which are serial. 
and then there was pipelining in which second request uh, can be sent uh, before the first one is fully transmitted and there was chunk transfer encoding and there was additional cache me control mechanism there was content negotiation we'll see what were the issues with http 1.1 so first issue is three round trips per request so this client in a server and this is from a blog post from cloudflare they written a very good description so client sends a tcp syn packet then server sends tcp syn plus ack client sends tcp ack then client says TS tls client hello server says tls server hello, server hello. then then client says, says tls finished still the request is not sent okay then http request is sent http response comes who has time for this okay three round trips per tcp connection let's revisit this later issue number 2 was multiple tcp plus tls connections are were created for concurrent requests so how does this happen like you write applications right in in those applications you will be importing images you will be importing css you will be importing js and these things have to be imported concurrently and when that happens multiple tcp connections are created and for each tcp connection there are three round trips as we saw so it takes a lot of time so let us understand this by going through the code because talking is boring so let us see the code okay if you have attended uh, matteo's talk on streams he mentioned today that do not use pipe <laughs> because he uses memory leaks anyway this is just ignore that you, use some framework yeah but here we are just writing normal create http create server so if a request url is hash just return index if it is style.css it return that okay that's it so i'll just made it simpler so if request url is the home page return index.html and otherwise just a regular expression which reads what the file name is and return that file name from the files folder okay let us go through the code because it is important we will see how it works in http 1 and 2 and 3 so index of html you import style at the top okay then you import an image in the body then you say hello world because in the first program you have to say hello world and then we import a script let us go one by one what each files do so style.css is just css like just uh, body displays flex whatever yeah just yes, yes. What script does, does is that it finds the name and changes it, it changes it to Node.js Interactive because we are at Node.js Interactive. So we'll say hello Node.js Interactive, and it will change the image, the global the image, to Node.js Interactive image. Cool. Uh, that's after a second. Yeah, after one second, wait for a second. And this is just a globe image. So let's see how it looks. So. I'll just enable loop and play. So here you can see that we are requesting localhost first, and then um, three concurrent requests are sent for CSS, JS, and image, and then the JavaScript is executed after a second, the set timeout, and then the image is sent, and Node.js interactive image is shown. Let us see how many TCP ports are created. It's very different. So below I have a command, a telnet command, which looks for how many TCP connections are created. When you see that a request is sent for local host, only one TCP connection are created. It shows three records, but only one is created. But then when it has to make three concurrent requests, you can see multiple TCP connections are created. That is the issue with uh, STP 1.1. So what are the issues with STP 1.1? One was three round trips per request that we saw. And second one was multiple TCP TLS connections for concurrent requests. Now, what did STP 2 do? Um, it was published in May 2015. And uh, uh, you saw that three requests are sent uh, for three resources in HTTP 1.1. In HTTP 2, only one TCP connection is created, although all three resources are fetched. So let us see how it works. So we write a HTTP 2 server. So we create a server, 
and then if it is slash, you return index.html, and otherwise you get the regular expression that file. And let me so if you examine using the network tab, it will be same as HTTP 1.1, only in the protocol uh, column, you will see that H2 is used, okay? So you don't see that how many TCP connections are used. So I go to the next slide, and I watch for TCP connections using netstat command, and you will see that only one TCP connections are created, although three requests are sent simultaneously. So let us see the benefits of HTTP2. Uh, we saw the one benefit, which is multiplexing and concurrency. So different HTTP requests are sent onto the same TCP connection. But there are some other benefits also, like stream dependencies. Clients can indicate to server which dependencies are important. Uh, there is HPAC header compression, where uh, it reduces the length of the header field encodings by exploiting the redundancy, because headers have a lot of redundant code, so it can be encoded. And there is server push or server can send resources with clients have not requested yet. But we will not go through that in detail. We will just see the issues with HTTP2. Because if there are no issues with HTTP2, HTTP3 will not exist. So let's see the first issue. HPAC is stateful. So um, the encoding and decoding tables have to be maintained at the endpoint. So because of which, uh, so what happens, each packet is sent. So first time it encodes something. And when second packet is sent, it will, uh, use the encoded content, it will send a new content only if there are some changes. So that is one issue. Um, delta encoding is used in header compression. So uh, this causes high resource uh, consumption in real tire, then it's not easily routable along the network. And the main issue which we'll discuss in today's talk is TCP head of line blocking. So what is TCP head of line blocking? When a single TCP packet is lost or corrupted, all subsequent pack packets are blocked until the lost one can be successfully transmitted. In HTTP 1.1, if this happens, you are blocking only one request because there is only one request, HTTP request sent over a TCP connection. But in HTTP 2, since multiple requests and re responses are carried over a single TCP connection, all those request responses will be blocked. So let us under understand this using a, oh, so yeah, so. Before that, we'll see where this effect is most, where this effect is most significant. It is most significant on high latency networks, which are long distance. So if there is high latency, probability of packet getting lost is more. Or on mobile connections, where probability of getting packet lost is more. So we'll understand this using a chain metaphor. So this is a chain. Uh, imagine this is a TCP connection between two computers, and what I've done is I put green colors and red colors, where green color consider that it's a CSS packet, and red color is JSS, JS packet, where CSS and JS files are requested over the same TCP connection. If a JS packet is lost or corrupted, then the entire chain is broken. So the entire chain post that JS packet, which includes CSS packets, have to be sent again. This is explained very well in HTTP3 explained if you want more details. So what does HTTP3 over quick does? So this is a draft 24 as of December 2019. So what it does is that when it is uh, setting up multiple streams over quick connection, they are treated independently. So that if any packet goes missing in one of the streams, only that stream has to pause and wait for the missing packet to get transmitted. So to understand this, let us see the chain analogy in which uh, this is CSS stream, this is JS stream. If the JS stream packet is lost, the CSS stream is not affected. Now you will say, isn't this what HTTP 1 was doing? Like, are we going back? No, because HTTP 3 is built on top of UDP. So on the left side, you can see HTTP 2, which is built on top of TCP, and HTTP 3 is built on top of UDP, and quick comes there in between. Speaking of UDP, I can tell you a joke, but most of you won't get it. Got it? Got it? Got it? <laughs> you didn't get it. Let me still give it a try. UDP 
पैकेट बार बॉक्स इंटू अ डिड यू गेट इट नाउ सो क्विक एड्स द फॉलोइंग टू यूडीपी ओके इट एड्स एरर हैंडलिंग इट एड्स एक्नोलेजमेंट इट एड्स फ्लो कंट्रोल इट एड्स पैकेट सिक्वेंसिंग बिल्ट इन एनक्रिप्शन टेल एस वन डॉट थ्री एंड बाई डायरेक्शन यूनि डायरेक्शन स्ट्रीम्स सो वॉट एवर बेनिफिट्स यू हैव ऑन टी सी पी दोज गुडीज विल कम टू क्विक अमेजिंग राइट एंड क्विक ऑल्सो रिड्यूस इज राउंड ट्रिप्स रिमेंबर वी सो दैट थ्री राउंड ट्रिप्स पर रिक्वेस्ट हु हैज टाइम फॉर दैट सो इन यू डी पी इट विल टेक ऑन इफ इच राउंड ट्रिप टेक्स हंड्रेड मिली सेकेंड इन क्विक इट विल टेक जस्ट हंड्रेड मिली सेकेंड फॉर द फर्स्ट रिक्वेस्ट और इफ क्लाइंट नोज द सर्वर ऑलरेडी इट विल टेक जीरो मिली सेकेंड सो बिफोर वी राइट द एच टी पी थ्री सर्वर रिमेंबर दिस क्विक इज नॉट इक्वल टू एच टी पी थ्री ओके दिस टर्म्स विल बी यूज इंटरचेंजेबली बट दे आर नॉट द सेम सो एच टी पी थ्री इज एप्लीकेशन प्रोटोकॉल विच यूज दिस क्विक एज अ ट्रांसपोर्ट प्रोटोकॉल सो यू हैव एच टी पी थ्री ऑन टॉप ऑफ क्विक देन ऑन टॉप ऑफ यू डी पी एंड देन आई पी द नोट जी एस इम्प्लीमेंटेशन विल लेट यू क्रिएट योर ओन अल्टरनेटिव प्रोटोकॉल्स ऑन टॉप ऑफ क्विक वन प्लेस वेर वी आर कंसिडरिंग यूजिंग क्विक इज फॉर इंस्पेक्टर प्रोटोकॉल वी करंटली यूज वेब सॉकेट्स बट वी मे स्विच टू क्विक और इन डायग्नोस्टिक्स सिमिलरली यू कैन क्रिएट योर ओन एप्लीकेशन प्रोटोकॉल ओवर क्विक लाइक डी एन एस डी एन एस माइट ऑल्सो यूज क्विक सो लेट एस सी द एच टी पी थ्री सर्वर ऑफकोर्स वेन यू रिक्वेस्ट स्लैश यू कैन इंडेक्स अदरवाइज यू रिक्वेस्ट द फाइल नेम एंड यू लोड द वेब पेज एंड यू एंड यू गेट दिस साइट कैन बी रीच वाय बिकॉज इट इज एक्सपेरिमेंटल ओके यू कैनॉट यूज इट इन प्रोडक्शन इट इज एक्सपेरिमेंटल बट वी हैव डन लॉट ऑफ प्रोग्रेस सो इट इज एन अर्ली सीज ऑफ डेवलपमेंट बट यू कैन हेल्प बिल्ड इट यू कैन हेल्प बिल्ड इट यू कैन हेल्प बिल्ड इट हाउ गो टू नोट जे एस क्विक सो दिस इज द प्रोग्रेस वी करंटली हैव अराउंड सेवेंटी परसेंट डन एंड दिस इज द प्रोजेक्ट बोर्ड एंड दिस लाइटली आउटडेटेड बट यू विल बी ऑन्डरिंग ओ लाइक आई वॉन्ट टू कंट्रीब्यूट आई आई कैन सी ऑल द एक्साइटमेंट इन ईच वन ऑफ योर आईज दैट यू वॉन्ट टू कंट्रीब्यूट टू क्विक बट यू विल बी ऑन्डरिंग ओ लाइक आई डोंट नो एनी थिंग हाउ डू आई कंट्रीब्यूट इट्स वेरी इजी राइट टेस्ट स्टार्ट विद राइटिंग यूनिट टेस्ट इट्स अमेजिंग वेन यू राइट यूनिट टेस्ट यू विल फाइंड बर्क्स एंड यू विल फिक्स दोज बर्क्स एंड देन यू कैन ऑल्सो बिकम अ कोलाबरेटर लाइक मी so how can i write unit text i am glad that you asked so you go to node js quick <laughs> you fork it and then you clone it then you say experimental quick because it is experimental get the coverage and these are the results slightly odd old but this is what we have for um, javascript so if you are into javascript you can help writing unit test in javascript and we need more help in writing c++ test because there is lot of code in c++ So, so now this is how to contribute to Quick in HTTP three. But if you want to go more deep and contribute to the protocol itself, then HTTP three protocol is a IETF draft twenty four right now. So you can join their meetings and suggest. So we'll just we'll still see an example web page on Quick that is Quick dot rocks. So this is how it looks. So when you examine it, in it at the bottom you'll see that uh, the protocol is HTTP two plus Quick. So let's go through demo. Uh, the Node.js just did, did not build on my machine. Uh, quick, so I'll show the demo which James showed. So in Node Conf, so I'll just do this. There we go. So this is one of our our, our tests that we're using, and I have debug tracing enabled. Basically, you're just going to see a bunch of text fly on across the screen, but it's a client talking to the server. Sending a copy of the test file itself back and forth. All right, but I want to well, once once it's through, I want to point out a few things that it, that that uh, we see in the results. So th this is you know sending all the UDP packets. This is all the trace information. It'll take just a second here, but it actually works, which I'm super happy about because last week this was seg faulting like crazy. Um, all right, so we see here at the end um, when these in, the, in these objects and all this information is available to the JavaScript layer. What we have here, you know, you can see the byte sent, right? You can see the number of um, uh, streams that were created. If you scroll up here a little bit further, 
we'll see that, you know, how many bytes were received on a particular session, when, it, when the handshake started, when it, uh, uh, when it completed. This is all information that's going to be available at the JavaScript API layer just built in um, uh, here. So this, this, right now, this is information that you would have to install additional modules to get in other things within Node. This is all going to be built into the API and, and available. Cool. So let's have a summary of what we learned. In HTTP 1.1, uh, multiple TCP plus TLS connections were required for concurrent request. In HTTP 2, added multiplexing in which uh, multiple HTTP requests were sent on the same TCP connection. Uh, TCP head of line blocking in which is, is the one in which the entire TCP connection is brought to an halt if a single TCP packet, packet is lost. And HTTP 3 over quick treats each stream independently so that if any packet goes missing in a stream, only that stream is affected. That's it. Thank you for listening. My name is Srivikram Kamath. All the code which I showed is present on GitHub and the slides are available there. Thanks.